This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I prophesy that there's going to be such a mighty move of God. This move of God will be greater than any move that's ever happened on the planet. Take every move that's happened on the planet, and this move of God will, will be better than all of those combined together. Why? Because God himself will allow his glory and his presence to fall upon this nation. World Changers Church International and Creflo Dollar Ministries are committed to changing lives all over the world. Your generous gifts are helping us to do just that. For your added convenience, we want to invite you to join Change Express, our automatic giving service. You can give monthly and change lives by having your love gift deducted from your checking account or credit card on the same day every month. To sign up, log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org right now. Many people have concluded that the Word of God is no longer significant for our day and time. Many people have. They've concluded it's no longer significant. They, people treat the Word of God like it's insignificant, that there is actually something better or greater than God's Word. And I'm telling you, it's not. Uh, it's not for the day and time. It's not for our problems. They say it's not. Ultimately, they're saying it's not for our lives. How do we get there? How do we get there? What, ha what happened in the lives of people to bring them to a point where the Word of God no longer holds the significance that it used to hold, the significance that it held with their parents and their grandparents, the significance that it held with, with people in our history that the only way they made it out was by the Word of the Lord, the Word of the Lord that kept coming to Harriet Tubman, that gave her the wisdom necessary to do what she did. I mean, what, what, what happened that we now, we now declare that God's Word is, has no more significance? I've even heard people, people say things like, Bible study is all right, but we must do something that really, that's really going to help. That, that disturbs me. Bible study is fine. Getting the Word is fine, but we need to do something that is really going to help. And so what they're really saying is that getting in the Word is it's sweet. It's sweet for you to get in the Word, but it's, it's, it's not really going to get results. That's what they're saying. Oh, it's sweet that we're getting in the Word. Oh, it's all right to get in the Word, Brother Dollar, but I don't, I don't believe that's going to get results. So we need to do this and do that and do that. Oh, baby, your emotions have deceived you. Look what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, 33. I'm going to read it out of the King James and the New Living Translation. The kingdom of God operation on this earth is one of the most powerful things operating on the earth. And he didn't say seek all these things to do first and make the word insignificant. He said in verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. How do I seek the kingdom of God? By seeking that word, by getting that word in my eyes and my ears, by planting it in my heart. Seek first the kingdom of God. What does God's words have to say about this? What does the word of God have to say about a pandemic? What does the word of God have to say about sickness and disease? What does the word have to say about lack? What does the word have to say about the spirit of division and racism? What does the word have to say about it? Well, it ain't nothing in the Bible about racism. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Jesus confronted racism when he dealt with the Samaritans, and, and he said, foxes have holes, birds of air have a nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay down his head. And he, that's why he said, that's why we went to the next city, because the Samaritans and the Jews, there was a division between them. He, the woman at the well, that was another racist point where they couldn't go straight. It was a lot quicker route to that place, but they had to go around it. He confronted it. There, there's, there's the Greeks and, and, the, the, and the Jewish people and, and the Jews and the Gentiles. And it, it's all over the place. 
even the 10 lepers that he healed. One of them came back and he was a Samaritan and he bowed down and worshiped Jesus. That was unheard of. Man, what are you doing? The Word of God, what does the Word have to say? What does the Word have to say about your marriage? What does the Word have to say about your parenting? What does the Word have to say about uh, being treated unfairly? What does the Word have to say? There's power in God's Word. There's favor that will operate on your behalf if you seek first the kingdom. Seek God. Seek His righteousness. Seek to declare that I'm the righteousness of God. Seek your righteousness. You, you are the righteousness of God, and you have the wisdom of God. You are the righteousness of God, and you have the wisdom of God. Say that with me. I am the righteousness of God, and I have the wisdom of God. Amen. And then he says, if you will put the word first place, if you will put the kingdom first place, then all other things will be added unto you. So if you put the word first place, he'll add the action. You put the word first place, he'll tell you exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. You give the word for it. But what we do is we go out and do what we want to do, and then when it, when it fails, then we go to God, oh, God, help me, oh, God, help me, oh, God, help me. And God's like, man, I had to plan. See, we, 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 we're, we're taking things to God and we're saying, you know, you know, oh, God, I got a good idea. But then when the good idea doesn't work, now you recognize you needed a God idea. No, let's start with God first. Let's start with God first. First, God should not be a second thought. God should not be somebody, you know, well, we didn't did everything we know to do. Well, there's always prayer. No, he needs to be at the top of your priority list. The Word needs to be at the top of your priority list. Jesus needs to be at the top of your priority list. You're not going to know real success until Jesus is at the top of your priority list. You know, there are so, so many things that compete for our attention and our devotion. Our job competes for our attention and our devotion. Our children compete for our attention and devotion. Our spouses compete for our attention. Hobbies compete for our attention. The demands and the distractions of life, they compete for our attention. And we have to be careful not to let them become more important or more of a priority than the Word and our relationship with God. And yet, how many of the things that occupy our time, occupy our money, occupy our thoughts and situations have taken the place where God is supposed to be? What has taken God's place? God used to be the top priority, and you've replaced Him with something else or somebody else. God used to be the top. And you know what happens? You know what it's called when you take God from the top and replace it with something or someone else? It's called idolatry. And we're living in a world full of idolatry where God is no longer first place. Anything can become a God to us. You got to be careful about that. What are you crowning as your, as your God? Your feelings and your emotions can become a God if you allow them to control you. Are your emotions controlling you? Are your feelings controlling you? You know, I, I, I say this quite often that uh, a man who does not control his emotions is the weakest man on the planet. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> emotions were not given to you to control and govern your life. You're supposed to have authority over your emotions. Your emotions are not supposed to have authority over you. And I can't tell you the number of people who are in jail right now because they couldn't control their emotions. The number of people who are dead right now that couldn't control their emotions. The number of people who lost a good job because they couldn't control their emotions. And your emotions led you instead of your emotions being subject to you. Have you crowned your emotions as your God, as your leader? You know, God was there, but now he's no longer there anymore. God was there, but you've replaced him with someone or something. We've got to begin to look at this. We need to ask ourselves, am I bowing down to God and His Word, or am I bowing down to my emotions and my feelings? You've got to understand this, folks. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. This is not a flesh and blood fight. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 8. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. There is something deeper it's the devil. It's demons. It's something deeper. 
You know, when you deal with racism, you're dealing with a, a, a demon spirit of division. And he likes it. That's what he's been using for centuries. You know, there's some truth to divide and conquer. He's been using it centuries. The scripture says that a house divided against itself will not stand. There's something deeper. And we cannot ignore the root to all of this. And that's why the church has got to get on it, man. You can't ignore the root to all of this. Everybody's called to do their part. And our part is to deal with that root, that demon of division that, that's taken a hold of people and possessed people to the point where they would just kill somebody. It's a demon. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Where there is envy and jealousy and strife, there is, there's division in every evil work. This is not a flesh battle. You can fight a battle with flesh, kill everybody you think that's got the problem, and you still got those demons that are going to be the root to all of those issues. But we can control that. Here's what the Scripture says if you are a Bible believer. If you're not, you need to start believing. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going around, I don't believe, and then one day, one day the rapture takes place, and right in front of your face, everything you didn't believe, evidence is given to you. You're going to die one day. I don't know how you're going to, you're going to die one day, and you think you're just, you think you're just going to die, and that's going to be it. That's not going to happen, bruh. Well, I don't believe in God. Well, Jesus ain't nothing but a weakling and all that. You better watch yourself. You're going to die one day. We don't have to debate about anything because the truth is going to be seen by you. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This thing is getting ready to wrap up. Jesus is getting ready to come back. You're going to see it for yourself. And people don't think about that. You think you just got all forever to live. You go around, well, this is my life. I can live it like I want to. And there's a path that seems right, but the end, the end thereof is destruction. It seems like this is the right thing to do. It feels like this is the right thing to do. And then you get down there, you dead, and you're in a burning hell trying to figure out how you got there. Listen, to some food. The Bible says a fool says in his heart that there's no God. The guy that says in his heart there's no God, he's a fool. You're listening to a fool. How many fools are you allowing to lead your life? What are we going to do, man? What are we gonna, this thing's getting real. It's getting real. Things are changing. They're not like they used to be. People don't think like they used to think. They don't act like they used to act. And... You know, the Bible talks about a great falling away. Is this it? Is this the great falling away? I'm not going to fall away. And I know world changes nation. We ain't falling away. We in this to stay. We're going to stay in this. We're going to fight in this. If we got to fight by ourselves, which we know we're not have to, but we're going to stay in this. There are Christians all around the world that God is preparing and God is teaching and God is anointing for a time such as this, praise God. And I'm telling you, you're going to wake up one day and, and the mighty men of valor, those who God have tucked away for a time such as this, the very remnant of God is getting ready to step out, praise God, to show that devil who thinks he's winning right now. You know, it don't take God a long time to turn things around, praise God. And you better get ready. I prophesy that there's going to be such a mighty move of God. This move of God will be greater than any move that's ever happened on the planet. Take every move that's happened on the planet, and this move of God will, will be better than all of those combined together. Why? Because God himself will allow his glory and his presence to fall upon this nation. And people are coming to repentance even today. You watch, you watch, you watch. People are coming to this whole thing right now. Man, this thing's going to lead to the greatest revival ever. The pandemic, praise God. The, 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 the inequality and, 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 and racism. Uh, and, and there's other things going to happen. The weather's going to play its part in there. And, and, and food crisis is going to play its part in there. And, 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 and they're, they're, this is just the beginning of sorrows. You ain't seen nothing yet. But God will be glorified. And his love will be seen. And the power of his majesty, the king, will be displayed. And signs and wonders will fill the earth. And there will be clear evidence that our God is God. 
and then you will come and you will know the glory of the Lord will fill this earth like the waters of Noah filled the earth when it was flooded. You watch what I say. God manifesting himself on this planet, and it shall be done. Oh, yes, it shall be done. Look at Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 6. I'm going to show you Satan is behind and he is the motivator of a whole lot of things. Look what he says in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the tricks of the devil, the wiles of the devil. The armor of God, you'll find out at the end of this, these verses, it's the Word of God. Put on the armor of God, it's the Word of God. Now watch this. He said, uh, next verse, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is not a flesh and blood battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but our wrestling is against principalities. That was, those are demon forces. It's against powers. Those are demon forces. Rulers of the darkness, those are demon forces of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are demon forces. So he says that our battle is not against the human the human being, the, the human world. It is against the spiritual demonic world. That's where the battle needs to take place. And he said, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil day. And having done all to stand, Stand, therefore, having your lawns girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You know what he's saying? He's saying, put on the Word of God. Get that Word of God on, man, that you'll be able to stand. And he says, and, af and after you've done everything you know to do to stand, he says, stand. Stand, therefore, until you get what you're standing there for. And he says, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's the Word of God. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. How does that work? You got the shield of faith here. You're standing on God's Word, and a contradiction comes like an arrow. He says, stick your shield up. Say, I ain't receiving that. I'm sticking with the Word. And you're standing on the Word, and then another contradiction comes, and you say, no, I won't receive it. He says, put your, your shield of faith up. Put it up in your mind. Don't receive all of the fables and all the stuff that's coming. He says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's all the Word of God. Praying, take the Word when you pray. Take the Word with you when you pray. Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all preservation and supplication for all saints. Now's the time. Now it's the time. Satan is behind and is the mediator. He's the mediator of all bad. He's the one behind all the sickness, all the pain. He's behind all the hurt. Satan's behind all the division. He's behind all the hatred. He's behind all the racism. He's behind the pandemics. He's behind all the death. He's behind all the strife. He's behind all the envy. The Bible says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that you might have life and have it, what? More abundantly. So when people refuse to honor God and follow God's wisdom in their decisions, it causes them to become bogged down with worry, resentment, and bitterness because they refuse to honor God. Eventually, it shows up as sickness and disease in their bodies. And in our culture, this kind of behavior causes a decline in our moral standards and our moral attitudes. But in Christ, we have life and we have it in abundance. So what has to happen now? Well, you know how important the word is. You now got to get, you got to get the word and watch this. And you got to believe it. You got to get the word and, and believe it. You got to believe the promises. The fear that Satan, the number one fear that Satan's going to put on your life is the fear that what the word promises won't come to pass. So you got to get that word and you got to believe that word. Go to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, 3, and 11. Hebrews chapter 4, 2, 3, and 11. Now you got to believe it. 
Now you got to believe it. So you've got to understand you will never be able to legislate morality. You can, you, can make, you can make millions of laws, but it will never legislate morality. The only one that can change a man's heart is the Holy Spirit. He's the only one that can change a person's heart. It's the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, Word of God. The only thing can change a man's heart. So thank God for the legislation that I believe will be coming forth, but I'm t churches, we got to rise up. We got to rightly divide the Word, man. We got to walk in love. We got to demonstrate how it ought to be. Amen. Now watch what he says here. He says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Check that out. The word was preached, but they, they got no profit because they didn't believe it. They got no profit because they didn't mix it with faith. Somebody says, yeah, I heard that. I heard that in my grandmama's church. Yeah, but you never believed it. Yeah, yeah, I heard, I heard Pastor Don talk about that. Yeah, but you didn't believe it. When you hear the Word, you believe the Word, you receive the Word. Look what he says, verse 2. Or verse 3, he says, for, which, for we which have believed do enter into rest. Now, that's the key. The authenticity of whether or not you believe something is going to be based and determined on whether or not you've entered into rest. When you've entered into rest, you cease to labor. You believe it so much that you chill, you rest. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. You hear what he's saying? He says, when you really believe this word, you'll start resting on it. And so when everybody else is full of stress, you're not, you're at peace. When everybody else is walking in fear, you're not, because you're, you're walking in faith, you believe the word. And that's the issue in today's time. People don't believe the Bible. They have found every way to be critical of it because of their lack of understanding of it, their, their lack of understanding how to rightly divide it. And so it's just become an insignificant book because people don't understand it. But I'm telling you, those of you who know how to rightly divide it and allow the Holy Spirit to teach you and to submit yourself to fivefold ministry gift, the apostle, the pastor, the prophet, the teacher, and the evangelist, and get that word on the inside of you, then the day you believe it is the day you arrest. Look at verse 11. The day you believe it is the day you arrest. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. He says the reason why, the real reason why you're not at rest is because you don't believe it. That's why. It's like I said, the reason why you're making excuses is because you just don't want to do it. The reason why you haven't entered into that rest is because you, you don't believe it. Because they that believe enter into the rest. They that believe enter into the rest. The highest kind of faith is entering into the rest, a place of calm and peace and ease where you are confident about knowing that that word is true and you believe it and you receive it and you stake your life on it. You believe it, you receive it, you stake your life on it. I've been in that situation before, man. It's like, all right, you have cancer. And I'm like, God, what do I do? And then he shows me what to do. And had I not known just that little bit, they'd have said you had cancer and I would have not went to God and I would just did what everybody else did and, and be dead by now. I'm not ever stepping away from the word. Never, ever, ever will I ever agree with you that I should step away from the word. And you may never, ever, ever agree with me, but I'm standing on the word. I, I stake my claim right here on God's word and I'm sticking with it, and I'm going to rest, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, my hair going to all fall out, and I'm not going to, no, no, no. I am at rest. Even in the midst of turbulence time, even in the midst of a pandemic, I refuse to come out of my rest. That's why the Bible says labor, therefore, to rest. So that means some days I may have to get up and, and make a little extra more confessions, or I may have to focus a little bit more on, on what I believe. Or I, I might have to just go at ease and just be at peace, but I am not, I am not going to spend my peace. I'm not going to do it. Listen, if it costs me my peace, it's too expensive. In today's busy and distracting world, many of us attempt to make sense of chaos to no avail. We give our attention to many different things instead of giving attention to the Word of God. 
Creflo Dollar teaches that the Word of God is what every Christian needs to win in this spiritual war with his powerful new three-message series, The Needful Thing. Hurry and claim your copy of this vital resource for only $20. I have the seed. I have the Word of God. I have the promise of God. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hold to it. I'm going to stand with it. And persecution is coming to try to get my seed. And you say, I'm not going to let you get my seed. Don't let negative emotions take your seed. Don't let trouble take your seed. Don't let the pandemic take your seed. Get your own revelation about the benefits of trusting a faithful God by adding the How Do I Trust God mini book to your purchase today and get both for just $25. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. Don't miss a service and catch up on the latest messages from Creflo and Taffy Dollar like No More Worries, Overcoming Uncertainty, and countless other life-changing series streaming on the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Holy Spirit's not sitting, sitting around reminding you of what you did in the past. That's condemnation. He's not going to do that. If any man is in Christ, he is a new species of being. You know why? Because of the image of Christ. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store, search Creflo Dollar Ministries, and download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. For more information, visit us at CreflodollarMinistries.org. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners. And